And joining us in the studio is legal practitioner Liberos Oshoma to take a look at this speech. Good morning, Mr. Good Oshoma. Morning. Good morning. I'm good to have you. My pleasure. Were you surprised by anything at all in the speech? Not. not, not. Why not? Yeah, um, it's, um, you, you know, we're very predictable people um, with um, the memos flying back and forth and the position of the um, Governor's Forum. Mm. Um, it was almost obvious that um, the lockdown was going to be relaxed. And uh, I have um, also been one of the advocates of um, Nigeria not um, using the copy and paste method. Right. You know, um, yes, it is good to immediately react, you know, with a copy and paste method. But thereafter, you have to look for a homegrown, you know, a methodology to solving your problem. And so, um, looking at um, just opposing the lockdown with um, the economic situation and the fact that um, there are no infrastructure in Nigeria, um, it became obvious that you know something has to give, mm -hmm. despite the fact that the numbers were, were rising. And, and so um, I had always insisted that let the governors who understand the peculiarity of the cases in their state mm -hmm. be the ones to manage this crisis. Um, if need be, the governors can take measures to lock down their state completely. Right. But and not Abuja. Abuja, somebody sitting down in Abuja, they are detecting what should happen in Lagos and Ogun. Had never been. They not necessarily know, play out well. Yeah. All right. Let's look at the speech again. For you, which area uh, did you see as pointing towards the way forward? You know, in easing, um, in going into this gradual easing of the lockdown in his speech? Yeah, apart from the fact that it shows that um, the federal government is listening to the cries of the people who are already crying that um, something should be done, mm -hmm. you know, and so to that extent, the government had taken the step to ensure that um, the state government, you know, are more responsible to the people, you know, by managing, you know, the crisis. Mm -hmm. um, I really do not, every other thing is a re repetition of, basically what the government had said before. Well. Um, um, looking at the numbers, the numbers keep increasing. Mm. Yeah, another good thing is the fact that um, the government has said um, the head workers before now, it was easy to just thank them and, you know, but something, you know, concrete had been done. The government had decided. Mm -hmm. um, the federal, federal government said um, that about 5,000, um, you know, frontline head workers you know, their lives have been insured. That's right. Um, that's a good one. That's a good step. And I, you know, I know Lagos state government had done, you know, similar thing. And I hope that uh, most state government also would follow, you know, such an um, initiative. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, um, the, um, uh, what do you call it? The, the president also had, um, you know, consistently talked. Before now, it was difficult for movement of um, goods and services, interstate right. movement of goods and services. So they have, they've also relaxed uh, that one so that, um, because we also do not have um, uh, storages, uh, storage facilities, and so some of the perishable goods that were produced are produced in the north that are, you know, sold in the south, mm -hmm. you know, one would have been wondering what would happen to the farmers. So we now, you know, it will be easy to move, you know, most of these goods. And then I also expect that there should be, you know, strict, um, you know, monitoring, especially mm -hmm. given what had happened in Kano. Um, right. And now it's um, it's unfortunate that we're still talking about strange diseases. diseases. And, um, you know, and then, but the saddest part of, of all of this for me is the fact that, you know, the president came out to say, yes, we can't sustain, you know, no economy can sustain a con complete lockdown while waiting for, you know, a vaccine. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, that's, that statement shouldn't have, uh, it's unprecedented. Waiting so, for a vaccine from where? From heaven, from the West, or from Nigeria. The statement is hanging. Mm -hmm. you, you know, I had expected, look at Madagascar, look at um, Senegal. Senegal, even Kenya. You know, I had expected that by now, after almost the months of lockdown, we should have, you know, a homegrown approach. Is mm. it that we don't have a pharmacist or we don't have um, professors of uh, medical herbalist. research? And, and, you know, so we're not even discussing in that regard mm. at all. So it's like we're waiting for help from God knows where. Uh, you know, so these are some of the, the, the fallouts for me. And I also felt that, yes, 
Um, now that we have realized that um, all of this was um, unnecessary, right. what is the way forward? forward. Mm -hmm. There is completely in the entire speech, there is nothing concrete to say, okay, this is a new course that we are charting, mm -hmm. apart from allowing the governors to you know, manage the crisis in, in their various states. What if, like we heard, if anything we heard it's, uh, f coming from Ghana is true, what if the numbers you know, skyrockets again the way they were, mm -hmm. the way they, it was reported in Ghana. What are we going to do? Are we going to fall back to this fire brigade approach of, of a lockdown? You, you know, all of these are not... Um, a lockdown um, which did not necessarily give results. Yes, the to, lockdown, yeah, because even, but the government has said there are results. Yeah, that I was coming able to, to that, if you agreed. That they've been able to curtail it. Mm -hmm. You know, but the question is, you know, curtail the influx from you know abroad but have we been able to manage the local you know, transmissions, the local already transmissions? Going on. yeah also if you if anything like i said if what we hear you know on on uh, social media is to if we are to believe what we hear mm -hmm. i had um, i had a voice note of a lady who said you know he was a volunteer for lagos state government and that the crisis in a world of even though lagos state government had denied it you know, but that the crisis it was, it sound, she sounded very, very believable mm. that the numbers in Amuwa Odofi. But unfortunately, and then, we can't verify it. So yeah, and then secondly, the um, uh, president has said that they are going to increase the testing capacity. What have we been doing since, since the lockdown? We're just over 10,000. Uh, 10, and then if you look at, in a space of two weeks, the numbers had doubled, you know, from, from uh, 30... 39 when we had the first, first lockdown right. and then it you know as at the time we we're having the second long lockdown we went it was and something. exactly and now you you know we're about 1000 plus and so it, it shows that it quadrupled it, actually exactly mm. and so what have we been doing is it that we have not been you know the new approach that we want to take now to expand you know swift testing what are we going to do mm. Um, um, Senegal developed, you know, um, what do you call it, um, um, local equipment to yeah, carry out, you know, met multiple testing, and then, you know, local ventilators. That look, right. this thing is not rocket science, according to um, the um, uh, 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 is it, um, uh, the Senegalese epidemiologist now. That is not rocket science, you know. They ha had to use, you know, valuable resources, mm -hmm. but here. The president also mm -hmm. talked about um, the crisis rocking the the palliatives, and that um, you know Nigerians should be patient with the government. That the government will, uh, you know, if you have not gotten it, it will get to you. So when is and, that going to and happen? And as I speak now, in all of the allegations, counter allegations, there is no investigation to ascertain what actually happened. And if you look at the numbers of vulnerables to pay, a lot of people have been crying that, you know, the sharing was concentrated in Ole's section. Even in that same note that we are talking about, I know so many people that have been crying that they have not received anything. So it is not the amount that is budgeted that mm -hmm. is the, the issue, but how well it is utilized to achieve results. So while others are spending money to find solutions, we also are, you know, spending money to give palliatives, and these same palliatives do not get to people that are, they are meant for. Mm -hmm. Others are smiling to the bank. I can tell you for sure that this crisis, a lot there of are people, people out. had benefited and cashing out. Which, of this which leads me to my next question, and for this section, final question for this segment for you. Uh, you know, he implied that part of why we are going into the gradual easing of uh, the lockdown is for economic reasons. Yeah, um, definitely. So, you know, in in comparing it with what he said in the earlier speech. Maybe that's just the new thing uh, which came in. I mean... I had expected that it, it, it's the economic reasons did not just, you know, jump at surface. us. You know, we had all of these economic reasons coupled with the fact that we do not have infrastructure. So I had expected a holistic approach. When you have crisis like this, you have a, a short-term measures, medium-term and long-term. Mm -hmm. All of these will probably be, 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 be thought through before you even initiate the first step. But it is obvious that we didn't even take it through. What we're doing with knee-jerk approach, and it's the same knee-jerk approach that we have adopted now. Because there's so much cry from people. Oh, there's hunger, there's insecurity now. And so the best thing is, oh, let's relax it, which is good. But the question is, 
why didn't we think it through before that okay we're going to you know lock down for two weeks mm -hmm. and thereafter for these two weeks we're going to ensure that we carry out massive and aggressive you know testing. contact tracing mm -hmm. and testing and thereafter for economic reasons we're going to ease so and so sectors or allow governors to do xyz but as we speak now we are still working out a blueprint on the sectors to ease. Mm. And then the government is still working out a plan on those civil servants that are going to resume work. Yeah. Because they are not containing the speech. As the president has said, the NCDC is going to work out plans. So mm -hmm. that means we are not even worked out a plan. And so for me, these are the problems. It's as if, you know, we're just there marking time, you know. Essentially, then when there is no concrete uh, way forward. No concrete way forward. So, so if you ask any reasonable person now, what is the concrete way forward for Nigeria? Mm -hmm. Apart from the fact that we're going to carry out a massive, aggressive contact tracing. What else? Nothing. The curfew. Are you happy about the curfew? The question is, <laughs> how effective? The, the question how effective will this curfew be? We're not even talking about, in the president's last speech, he sympathized with people who had been brutalized and attacked by security agencies. And, you know, but then, we are not, take Lagos, for example. Are we taking into cognizance the traffic? you know, situation in, law, in Lagos, where in some areas traffic will last as long as 10, 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. Are we taking all of this into cognizance? You know, and then also you have overzealous security operatives who, you know, a few of them had been, um, according to the police reports, have been arrested and the, you know, investigation is ongoing. You know, what happens to the families that have died in the process, you know, unlawfully? I'll ask you to keep your thoughts there. We'll still come back uh, to you, Liberals, as the news continues. Governor Kayade Fayemi of Ekiti on Monday night extended the current four-week-old lockdown and restriction of movement in the states by another six days. Fayemi made this known at about 9 p.m. on Monday in a statewide broadcast shortly after that of the president. He regretted that it was the desire of the government that normal life and business activities be restored immediately in view of the economic pressure and loss of livelihood for many of the residents, but also remarked that the prevalence would not allow that at this time. He also added that the government aims to test 10,000 persons between now and June. And still with me in the studio is legal practitioner Liberos Oshoma. What are your thoughts? <laughs> you, you see, this um, copy and paste approach, you know, I said it last time. Um, Do you think it's really copy and yes, paste? Yes, it is. It is. You it, wait for the president. Ellen... You wait for the president to make his broadcast, and then you just copy that approach by the president, and then you adopt it. Well, I don't agree with you because he says yeah. he's extending theirs by six days. So yes. if he is the one in charge of the state, yeah, he may know where it's pinching them. Why wait for the president to make his broad broadcast? when the president has said, okay, if between now and six days' time, mm -hmm. and thereafter you also extended by six days. Mm -hmm. You know, it just shows lack of, um, you know, proper planning. I, I expected more from, you know, somebody of um, his, his, his caliber. When you say you expected and, and more. So, mm -hmm. le let's look at it from, from this point of view. Are you waiting for Abuja to give you, you know, feedback on what to do? In your state, or you should be the one giving Abuja. Well, I start feedback. to be corrected. Uh, would it, uh, wouldn't it be well a matter of protocol and respect for the one who is the number one person? Okay, now in the that country. Abuja had said, states manage your crisis. But Abuja Ekiti, did not say Ekiti until Ekiti was the not speech. part of. Look, let me tell you, there were some states. If you remember what happened, the moment President Buhari you know, announced the 14 days lockdown. Mm -hmm. All the governors, a lot of them just started adopting 14 days lockdown yeah, also. Mm -hmm. And now that the president also had extended by six days, you see all of them adopting by six days. The president has said, manage the crisis. Mm -hmm. This is a template, you know, adopt yours. So I had expected that each governor would look at the peculiarity of the crisis in their state and said, okay, well, the government had said Lagos, Ogu, and Abuja mm. between now and six days' time. And thereafter, you can begin to find a way of easing the lockdown while carrying out aggressive testing. You know, so what is the current situation in Ekiti vis-a-vis -vis what is happening in Lagos? Can we afford an um, extension of six days? Can we afford an extension of 12 days? Can we afford an extension of 14 days? Can we immediately go back, you know, to work? Mm. Or can we immediately from today begin to ask certain sectors 
to resume work, considering the fact that the crisis we have is not as prevalent as that of mm. um, um, Lagos. Look at Anambra, for example. Anambra state governor didn't wait for the presidential broadcast oh. before they started easing up, you know, lockdown in their state. That's thinking outside the box and not wait, you know, for an approach from Abuja and then you just copy. Mm. The same way we're in Nigeria, marking time, waiting for a, a, a vaccine from somewhere and then we'll copy. All right, liberals. Yeah.